Hi everyone, Nick Kratikos of Nick Seasonal Decor, and down here tonight is Bella. So Bella actually hasn't filmed for us for... A little, a little while now. Yeah, a little yeah. while. It hasn't been too long, but it's been long enough. So as always, when you guys come in, be sure to thank Bella for recording me tonight. And we're actually going to be tackling two wreaths. So they're going to be very simple um, and kind of unique. So we've never actually worked with one uh, before. And the other one's going to be a beautiful wildflower, uh, completely covered floral grapevine. So stick around. Uh, what I want you guys to do right now is to let me know which of the two you want to see first. So here, if we get up close, we have some tomatoes. And I'm just going to pull up the video, make sure that we are live. Uh, welcome. Let me know if you guys can see and hear me okay. But we're going to be dealing with the tomato. And we also have this wildflower kind of mixture. So we have some of these berries. We have some of these wildflowers. We also have a few of these as well. Um, so comment down below right now. Let me know which of those two you would rather see. Uh, we could do either one to start off with. I think either are going to be kind of fun. So let's catch up. Let's see. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Hi, Sarita. Nice to see you. So I'm just trying to load the comments, make sure we are live. Can you guys see us okay? It's giving me a little bit of trouble on my end. Um, let's see. But yeah, let us know. And Bella, you can start telling us too what people want to see first. Either way, both projects are going to be completed tonight. Uh, but it's always fun giving you guys an input. It lets us know what you like and you know want to see first. So, um, Sharon says tomatoes first. Sharon says tomatoes. Yep. All Let right. us know, guys. All right. Well, I guess we'll start with the tomatoes. That's kind of the one I've, I've been anx uh, anxiously waiting for. And, you know, here we have a sign. It says beef tomatoes. Um, what does that say? Reduce high blood pressure, improves digestive health, promotes healthy skin, supports bone health, eat well. So I'm a huge fan of tomatoes. And more specifically, I'm a huge fan of homegrown tomatoes. And Bella, you know, last week, we just planted our tomatoes not too long ago, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, which is rather late, you guys. We're a little bit behind, and you know, hopefully we have a good yield this year. But Bella, you can agree with me on that. There's nothing quite like a homegrown tomato. Nothing. Let us know what's your fa like. What's your favorite way to eat a tomato? Like mine's with a little feta cheese and olive oil. Yes. Yeah, so you guys know we're Greek here, so we love you know just tomato salads with maybe some uh, cucumbers. You know, Greek salads uh, are definitely the way to go. So I love cherry tomatoes, and Stephen loves cherry tomatoes too, because you can just go out in the garden, you guys, and just pick a tomato right off of the vine. Um, in years past, we've grown, you know, crazy amounts of tomatoes. The last few years with everything going on and everything that we've been trying to accomplish, we haven't been actually focusing on our garden. Um, this year we're putting a little bit more effort into it and we still have to finish up Steven's garden video. So for those of you that don't know, Steven did, um, purchase a new home. So, you know, we started the landscaping video last week. And this Saturday, we're actually going back to finish up his landscaping. We had to wait for Dig Safe to come, uh, which is always a good idea. So for any of you guys that ever do yard, uh, you know, work in your yard, make sure you call Dig Safe because the last thing you want to do is bust your water line, bust your, you know, electricity, and damage your pipes because that's going to cost you a lot more to fix than landscaping will. So here's what we have so far. We've attached our sign. And I think this is going to be really cute. Let's just open up the tomatoes to show you guys how cool these are. Hi, Nick and Bella. How are you both? I'm doing good, Karen. How are you? Hey, Karen. Nice to see you. Um, so the sign and tomatoes came from Michael's. And I was actually there. We went to a different Michael's just to pop in while we were waiting some fruit, uh, for some food uh, with Dad and Yaya. And they thought it would be a cute idea to do something with this. So, I mean, look at those. I just want to bite into them. Ooh, Carrie does an egg and tomato sandwich. I've never tried that. That sounds good. Ooh, that does sound good. So for the bow, we're actually going to be constructing it using two different ribbons. So here we have this. Isn't that pretty? And we've had this for a while now, and I've been wanting to put it to use. And we just haven't gotten around to using it. So we have this and, of course, our trusty burlap, which I need to be getting some more. We have some coming in, uh, but I love burlap ribbon. <laughs> you guys know that. But look, it matches perfectly. So we're going to do a blend of both of these. Create loops about three and a half, four inches. And as you guys come in, if you don't mind hitting that like and share button, we would greatly appreciate it. Helps us inspire others. Ooh, some people are saying they eat it with the BLT. Ooh, I love BLTs. Ooh. That's my go-to order at Subway. Yeah, so Bella's always been a, a picky eater, you guys. And, you know, the older she gets, it's the easier because she can, get, she can just get her own food. But I'm telling you, when we were kids... Bella was the worst eater. Yeah, I was pretty picky. Um, you know, if there Not was a, so much anymore. If there was a piece of pepper in her soup or anything, she would lose her mind. So she's <laughs> eased up on that. But 
Um, yeah, I mean, Bella, you've always been a fan of tomatoes, which is yeah, I love tomatoes. Really good, but yeah, he loves them too. So we're gonna just create, I don't know, three to five loops of each. And I see we're over 300 viewers. Thank you guys. So also before I forget, because I am quite forgetful, um, I did pin in the description and the comment section our uh, Christmas in July class. So for those of you that took the patriotic class, lots of you guys convinced me that you wanted to see a Christmas in July class. So we're actually working on that. So, um, you know, July, I believe 17th, 18th and 19th, we are hosting a online class like we did with the patriotic one. And this class is going to be the same. We're going to be creating a wreath, a garland and a lantern swag. So I'm envisioning this going over my mantle. So uh, two months ago in the exclusive wreath community, we did create a beautiful mantle piece. Um, that's could be classified year round and, and it's something that I would leave up year round But you know since we do so many different types of tutorials I want to make sure that we you know have a Christmas garland as well So that class is $14.99 and you guys can learn more by clicking the link above or below Work in a few more loops um, Marianne wants to know where you're getting your burlap ribbon this time. She can't seem to find any So we'll actually have some available actually so I'll let you guys know when it comes in um, but yeah, I love burlap ribbon and honestly, you guys can be getting it anywhere. You know, most stores in person as well as online carry a form of burlap one way or another. So these scissors are awful. So I'm going to switch them over to the other ones. We threw out a pair last week together, you guys, but I guess I maybe had another pair that is rather old. So we'll cut some longish tails as well. Like so coming back in with another longer tail of this black. And this black ribbon I found last minute, you guys. I wasn't planning on using it in this, and then I figured it matched really nicely, so we're putting it to use. Bow is constructed. Take a pipe cleaner. Secure everything together. Hey, Peggy. Nice to see you. Now what we can do is dovetail those tails real quick. And we cut a wide range of sizes, you guys. I never focus on making sure the lengths are the same. And, you know, I say it enough, and it's kind of sounds like a broken record at this point, but it's true. You know, the more you focus on perfection and making sure everything looks right, you know, the more crazy you'll be. So if you want to be crazy, be my guest and cut them super perfectly. Uh, I just don't have the willpower to sit there and mm -hmm. measure my loops out. Michelle wants to know how she can sign up for the class. Yes. Yeah, so Michelle, you can click the link in the description uh, or the pinned comment in the comment section. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, you know, you guys know I love designing for every season and holiday, but you guys know Christmas has my heart, which is why you see it throughout the entire year. Um, Christmas is just something I've always absolutely loved since I was a little kid. And Bella knows that because I used to be so annoyed oh, yeah. about it. Um, but it just has a special place in my heart. And, you know, there's nothing like decorating for the holidays. Nothing like it. Of course, we do every season and every holiday, but nothing ever feels as right as Christmas does. Okay, we'll eat homegrown tomatoes anyway. Love fried green tomatoes. You know what? Let's take a quick little poll. Comment down below. If you're watching this video, I want to hear your feedback. Have you ever had a fried green tomato? Um, I, you know, I don't we, think I have. We live in Massachusetts. You had it? No, I yeah, we, we live in Massachusetts, and it's not something I ever heard of until, you know, our following base started talking about it. So you guys actually introduced me to that. And let me know if you've had it and if it's worth giving a shot. Um, you know, I think the perfect time to be eating fried green tomatoes just from, you know, a garden perspective is late fall. You know, as soon as we get that heavy frost and the tomatoes just, you know, start to, you know, just sit there without growing. I think, you know, we'll have a lot of them this year, so maybe we can put them to use. What do you guys think? Is it worth trying? If not, that's okay. If you don't like it, I think maybe we'll still give it a shot, right? We never know. Yeah, why not? Look at those. These are going to be so much fun to add, you guys. Everyone's saying how real they look, and they Don't really do. Don't they look do. real? They do look real. They look fresh. All right. Bow is in place. We're giving this a good fluff, trimming any tails that are too, too long. So having different sizes is okay, you guys, but you don't want to have tails that are, you know, 14 inches long in a wreath like this. It just won't look right. Trimming them up. It's been pouring out off and on all day today, too, you guys. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's much needed, so I, I'm not complaining, but unusual weather we've had this spring. Very unusual. A lot of people are saying, yes, try it. Kathy says fried green tomatoes are the best. The best. Even better than just regular tomatoes. I mean, I've heard people absolutely go crazy over them. So let me know. Mary didn't like them. Mary didn't like them. 
Yeah, I guess they're not for everybody, but yeah, none of my family has ever had it. And you know Yaya's tried everything, and I don't think she's ever had fried green tomatoes. That could be a straight up lie though, so I'm gonna ask her tonight and get back to you guys. I feel like we've had this conversation before, but I don't remember. I know dad hasn't. Oh. All right, bow's in place. Any super duper long tails, like I said, just give them a slight trim. And we'll fluff again once we you know, hang up our design and take pictures of it. That's always a telltale sign if you need to tweak anything. But that's what we got so far. What do you think? All right. Now let's work in some greenery. So we have some of this. And you guys may remember this, but we haven't touched this stuff in a long, long time. Um, this is actually a eucalyptus, but this eucalyptus is like variegated. To me, it's always looked like boxwood. And if I shut up for a second, you guys can hear the rain. Let's see. Can you guys hear how heavy that is? It's coming down. It's coming down. It's needed, though. Our gardens haven't been getting the water they've needed. We still got to do so much work. I mean, it's just one thing after another, you know, when it comes to landscaping. One thing after another. Um, so, Laurel asks, has anyone ever had tomato pie? Hmm. Tomato pie? That sounds interesting. What is that? Who asked that? Uh, Laurel. Laurel, let us know what that's like. No, I've never, I've never even heard of it, let alone try it. Um, I've always been the type to give everything a shot. Bella's a little bit more picky than me, but she's gotten better over the years. Um, the only thing I can't do just literally physically is mushrooms. I've never been a fan of mushrooms. Oh, I I'll hate eat them either. a cricket on a stick, you guys, before I'll have mushrooms. Um, and let me know if you're with me on that. Please tell me I'm not the only one. My family loves their mushrooms, not me. I could do my whole life without ever eating a mushroom. Bella, you like I, them, don't you? No, I hate mushrooms too. Since when? I don't, I don't, I've tried them. I don't like them. Well, They're just a very weird that's texture. That's to me, but it makes sense because Bella's a very mm. picky eater. But out of everything in this world, that is the only thing I don't like. That's it. Onions. I love onions. Garlic. I could eat a whole clove of garlic, you guys. That's how much me and Alex love garlic. Uh, yeah, just onions. Only that. So now let's come back in with another foliage. It's a southern thing, says Paula. Here in your rain and ours, torrential. Exactly, Sheila. I don't get it. I don't know what's happening with our weather. You know, usually it's, you know, we go through a dry spell at this time of year. And we've been having one. So it could be 100 degrees one day and everything's dry. And the next day could be 60, like 65 today um, and torrential rain. And then that tomorrow, if it's warm, everything will be dry again, bone dry. So this greenery came from Hobby Lobby and it's actually a year round foliage. So that's the nice thing that you can get at stores like that because they carry things that you can use, you know, throughout the year and especially seasonal touches like this. Uh, this is a darker sign, darker kind of grain. So I don't want to add anything too light. But with that being said, this foliage is one of my favorite foliages for fall. For good reason. Can you see how well that would work for fall, Belle? Yeah. So we'll work another piece down below. Extending past the wreath. Here we have one little leaf. Len says, yuck, do not like the shrooms, but I would not eat a cricket on the stick. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, I'm being serious. I'd give anything a shot. Um, just if it's mushrooms, I'm all set. <laughs> I don't know why. I, it's weird. All right, so I think that's enough greenery for the time being. So how about we work in some of these cool, um, what are they called again? Tomatoes. Why did I just forget that? <laughs> so if you guys don't mind hitting that like and share button, we would appreciate it. It helps us grow and inspires others. So, you know, that's probably how you guys found us. So for these tomatoes, how do we want them? I thought it'd be cool if we had like them hanging down below, uh, but I'm not sure that's gonna be a possibility today. So maybe we'll just take this one. See, this one has a big hole in it. I'm gonna just take my stick that we broke off. See how I dipped it in my hot glue? I forgot to say that. Dipped it in my hot glue and stuck it inside of these tomatoes. And these tomatoes are just styrofoam, so it goes in very easily. Then we can just dip. Ooh, Jeffrey says, totally off topic, new three month old lab puppy coming this weekend, so excited, aww. Who said that, Jeff? Jeffrey, Jeff, yeah. Jeff, you gotta post pictures, we have to see. Um, you know, there's just something magical about having a pet. And for those of you that have never had a pet, you know, you're definitely missing out. I know animals aren't for everybody, but animals truly change lives, they really do. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see Jeff. That's so exciting. That's awesome. So Bella, do you think they should all go up 
or should they kind of go in different directions? This one could be upside down, you think? Yeah, put them in different directions. Yeah, I think that'll give us the best effect. So this one, we're gonna just choose the best looking side, take our stick, and poke it in, like so. Then we can trim up that stick as needed. like so. So we have so many exciting things coming your way, you guys. And, you know, we haven't been talking a whole lot about it. Uh, and that's because I don't like to, you know, count my, my eggs before they hatch type of situation. I want to make sure that everything is ready. Um, but we had a big, exciting day full of, you know, things happening today with, you know, that you guys will see and hear about. Um, so stay tuned. I'm just so excited and so, you know, thankful for everything that's going to be happening soon. So Bella, upside down, you think again? Uh, pointing it more towards that way. Yeah. Like that? All right, let's do that. Do I have another scrap stick? Of course I do. Why use anything new when the scrap stick does the trick? So we'll point it like that. So again, take our stick, apply a drop of hot glue, and poke it into your tomato. Like so. Then we can take the whole stick and work that in. So that's three tomatoes. Oh, that's cute. Isn't that cute? I do want to work in a little bit of foliage. So let's work in another piece or two, which we can just pop off of another bush. So I just popped off a few leaves. We'll take them and work them in. And nothing is done until we fluff. You guys kind of know that by now, but I just want to reiterate that because, you know, things look ugly until you give them some love. So make sure that you fluff everything out all of your tails get pulled downwards. You know, gravity is your friend when it comes to designing. And once that, you know, takes hold, it'll look a lot, lot better. So don't be too nervous at this point in time if it doesn't look to your liking. So that's three tomatoes. You guys think we should add some more? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Hey, Danae, nice to see you. Pam has shared. Thank you, Pam. Yeah, I appreciate all the shares and likes, you guys. What if the fruit is plastic? So Lisa... Very, you know, very rare will you find things like this being a hard plastic. It's cheaper for, uh, cheaper for them to manufacture as styrofoam. Um, so I, I haven't really come across anything like this. Maybe lemons. And if that's the case, you can just poke a hole with a stick and you should be good to go. So, yeah, just watch out for that, that sound, Bella. But here we have some of these. What do you think? Should we work in some berries? Oh. Some berries? Um, yeah, why not? Or, you know, tomatoes have little yellow flowers. So I was thinking we work in some yellow flowers, but, you know, oh. it's all up to you What are you guys, guys saying? Yellow flowers or berries? Comment down below. That looks good enough to eat. I know, Julie. Um, you, know, I, you know, the next time it's really hot out, I think I want to make myself, you know, a, a Greek salad. And Greek salads oh. have no lettuce in them. So it's just tomatoes, feta, olive oil. Bella loves black pepper and, you know... Lots of olive oil, yeah. like black pepper and salt in your salads, but, you know, I could just eat... I like vinegar, vinegar and olive oil. Vinegar's good in it too, yes. What are they saying? Hello from Tennessee. Welcome, Mary. Um, looks good with three. three. Let's hold it up. Maybe that'll give a better visual. Right. And if we need to tweak it, we can always tweak it after the, you know, design. I think it looks really good. Looks good, you guys? Some people are saying, um, I think some yellow, I mean, yeah, some yellow... Yellow flowers. All right, let's work in some yellow flowers. And then I'm going to tighten the sign afterwards. Let's work in just a few. We don't need too many, you guys. Just a few. But this is going to give kind of that realistic approach. So these flowers aren't exactly what tomato flowers look like. Uh, but it's pretty darn close enough. They just have a little bit, you know, these are a little bit more ball-like. Whereas, you know, traditional tomato flowers aren't nearly like this. But it's just the point, right? And Bella should know what tomato flowers look like after this year because she's growing her own. Oh, yeah, I am. Right? So you're going to see. I mean, you already should see. Oh, yeah, I already know. We grow them all the time. So cut off a few more pieces, and then we're going to switch over, you guys. So don't go anywhere. We still have one more quick wreath to make uh, just to make up for lost time. You know, we haven't been as live as much as I would have liked uh, over the last couple of weeks. You know, we've been incredibly busy tackling new things for you guys. That you'll hear more and see more about as the days go on um but you know i want to make sure that we still spend some time together place another piece there cut off one more piece for down below and then we should be good to go what do you guys think you think that added that nice pop i like it
All right. All right, there's our final piece, and that should be good to go. All right, you guys, there's our tomato wreath. Oh, I have one more little stem that fell off. I'll poke that in. Right. Here. Robin says, now it looks real like it's in the garden. Right, now it looks real. So there's our tomato design. Yeah, that looks really good. Looks good? All right, show some hearts if you guys like that. Something different, you know, you may be thinking... I don't want this on my front door, but we have plenty of farmer friends that probably would love something like this. Now, if you're just a fan of tomatoes as well, you know, this is kind of comical. It's funny. Who, who really designs with tomatoes like this? So now it's time to switch over to our next wreath. Let's clear off our table with our little leftover greenery like so. And these are actually the new grapevines that we just got in. You guys are going to hear more about this as time goes on. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned. Like I said, we have tons of things coming your way. So let's snip off some of this. This is a beautiful purple wildflower bush. And this was $9.99 from Michaels. And we're just gonna pull up some of those flowers, cut them off individually. And we have three of these bunches if we wanna work in all three. So it also has this fake grass. And this is, you know, whenever I talk about fake grass, this is the grass I refuse to use. I hate it. Um, I hate it more than anything. And this is often the kind of grass you'll see from the dollar store. Um, and you know, price has nothing to do with it. It just doesn't look right. And if it bends, you know, it gets crinkled. So if possible, we're gonna remove all of it. I've been waiting for this comment. Karen goes, Bella, Fig Newtons for dessert. Yes, Karen, wash down the tomatoes. I'll have some Fig Newtons. <laughs> um, Millie just signed up for the Christmas in July classes. Awesome, Millie. I'm looking so forward to it. You know, like I said, we had so much fun with the patriotic class. It was a blast. Um, but the Christmas in July class is just going to be extra special to me because I love Christmas and who doesn't love Christmas? So if you're a beginner, this is going to be very beginner friendly. We're going to take you guys step by step, showing you, teaching you how to make everything along the way. And we're also going to have an example materialist, um, where you can kind of reference off of things, but I always encourage you guys to make it your own. That's something I've always said. And it's something I firmly believe in because that's how you kind of grow and learn. So if I'm using red and gold or silver and gold, you know, use a color that complements your house. Use blues, whatever colors you need. So let's work in these. This is a 14 inch wreath base and look at how perfect that wreath base is, not a single leaf. And we'll be talking, like I said, more about those as time goes on. So let's just take some of these. Just watch the, the sound coming off of that. There oh, we go. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. So every three, four inches or so. Doesn't have to be super duper close. Millie says the patriotic classes were fun. Awesome, Millie. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it's still hanging up on my door. The garland, the wreath, and uh, the lantern swag we brought inside, of course, especially with the weather like this. But see what I'm doing? I'm working everything in the same direction, you guys. And that's really how you get the best effect with anything you're designing for that matter. Um, you know, even though we're using a 14 inch wreath base, we have turned these 14 inch wreath bases into 16 inch wreaths and we've turned them into 24, 28 inch wreaths. So depending on how long your stems are, how long your bushes are, you can really add some length uh, to each and every one of these wreaths. Sherry says, love some purple. Me too, Sherry. Yeah, purple, you know, as a kid was my favorite color and I still love it to this day. And we're going to use probably three. We broke down two of these. And, you know, honestly, you don't really need anything else after this. If you want it to work in a bow, so be it. If you don't want a bow, you know, you don't need a bow. That's something I talk a whole lot about. Um, you know, not every design needs a bow. And to each their own. If you want to work one in, you can. But my philosophy is, is sometimes it can take away from a design. So some of my favorite reads to create actually require no ribbon at all. And this is one of my favorite techniques. I'd say this technique and the technique where we have a bow in the upper left or right uh, or middle you know, of our wreath and then come back in with our tails kind of weaving in and out. You know what I'm talking about, though? Yeah. That is my favorite. And then, you know, just simple floral designs like this wreath, like the one we designed in the exclusive wreath community last night. Those are my favorites, too, because they have no ribbon. Karen, so oh, yep. sorry. Karen wants me to tell you that she's making oatmeal raisin cookies later. <laughs> Ooh, Karen, send some our way. I love oatmeal raisin. I know, you're weird. Yeah, coming from the Fig Newton girl. <laughs> Me and Yaya went to Market, uh, not Market ba uh, Basket. We went to Aldi's for the first time together. And, you know, the last time I went to one was in Dallas for Wreath Makers Live the first year. 
It was my first experience going to an Aldi's. And we bought Bella some Fig Newtons. Yeah, I was I so excited them, seeing them. <laughs> but they're off brand. <laughs> they're just generic brand. But there's no difference. What do you guys think? You think there's a di well, certain mm, things. Let me get that straightened out. Certain things, you know, goldfish, cereals, and stuff like that. Sometimes you can just get an off brand and it tastes the same. And then other things like like Oreos and stuff. I haven't tried them yet, the so same. I'll let you guys know if they taste the same. They should. Fig Newtons, it's just figs. But you know, off brand things. Who cares? Cut off a few more. I'm not going to save this bush, so might as well make this wreath as thick and lush as possible. And uh, that's it. What kind What kind of flowers are these? Uh, just purple wildflowers. These came from Michael's. But I am, like I said, removing this. Can you guys see how ugly this is? And if we take these leaves, bend them, see what happens to them? It just looks cheap, and you can cut yourself on these too. So be careful. We don't want any casualties from designing wreaths. Working in a few more. I made a pineapple upside down cake yesterday. Oh, that sounds that so good. That sounds so good. Um, where did you buy the flowers? These are from Michael's. And look at the back, you guys. I mean, I messed up right here. Just two stems sticking out. The rest is clear. And the reason I get that and the way I get that, because I see a lot of designers cleaning up the back of their reeds, but if you take your stems and angle them in the same direction as the grapevine, almost parallel, of course you're entering the grapevine, but if you keep that in mind, uh, the chances of you actually, you know, piercing the back of it aren't as great as, you know, taking the stem, sticking it in, and going from there. So should we work in some of these, or do you think that's enough? What mm. do you guys think? More flowers? Alice loves this airy wildflower wreath. Or, exactly, Lisa, Oreos are not good off-brand. You know, Girl Scout cookies, no, either. Um, which they haven't come by in a while. They probably looked at our family, and they're like, you know what, we're going to just go to the next house today. <laughs> Uh, but I think that turned out pretty. That is very Any pretty. More flat? Where did you buy them? Yes, Michaels. Do you ever work with dried lavender? So a number of years back when I first started out a company, Nude Nielsen, uh, sent me a whole lot of product to you know, demo with, uh, for them. And you know we still have tons of lavender. And to this day, we're talking four years later, it still smells so great. Uh, and it's over there in a basket. So I haven't de dealt with it yet, um, but I still want to. So we have plenty of dried lavender, believe it or not, that we're going to put to use someday or another no more no more more i think i think we have enough uh so i, I agree with good. you guys you know if you wanted a bow you could add a simple bow but who agrees that something just like this and these are the best reads for yaya because like i said when she hangs up my wreath she always makes it a point to hang it upside down every time <laughs> uh, so these are easy for her because there's no way to tell up you know from down so with that being said again if if you guys don't mind hitting that like and share button, it helps us inspire others. Um, also, we have our Christmas in July class happening next month, uh, but the doors are open. We are going to be creating a wreath, a garland, and a lantern swag. And I'm figuring this is going to go over on my fireplace uh, to kind of get a head start for the Christmas season. So we're kind of going off the, the colors that we're using uh, for the Christmas tree in that room and the other decorations as well. So more information is by clicking the description and the comment section, the pinned comment, uh, so you guys can join. So it's nice and easy to this time. So I know we have a lot of group members from the patriotic class that still haven't requested the group. Um, so the way this Facebook group, or it's a Facebook class, it's hosted through Facebook. The way it works is that, you know, you'll have access as soon as you click purchase. So it makes it nice and easy for me, as well as you, uh, in order to find the class. I don't have to approve, you know, members. I don't have to sort through, you know, emails and stuff like that. It's direct. Uh, you pay, you're in, and you're good to go. So it's nice and simple. Along with that, be sure to follow us on Instagram. We post content daily and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do have, you know, a lot of things that are in the works happening there as well. So you make sure to follow both of those channels. Subscribe to our email list. That's a probably our final little plug at nickseasonaldecor.com. That way you're first to know when the exclusive wreath community opens the doors back up, which is going to be end of July, early August, I'm figuring. Um, and you know now we're creating tons of Christmas. So for those of you that are nervous that it's just going to be full throttle Christmas ahead, you know as you can tell from today, that's not the case. We still have to get through Halloween, fall. We have tons of those designs. So more to come. Uh, is that tomato wreath going up for sale? It is, Barbara. So I'll have this listed after this video, and I think it's unique. You know, it may not be your taste. Let's hang that. Let's hold that up one more time, and I'll have it fluffed out. May not be everybody's taste, but I do think it turned out cute and unique more than anything. So doing something different, uh, you know, always is fun. So thank you guys again. I love you all, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow night. 
at what am I trying to say? Between seven thirty and nine PM Eastern. I'm forgetting. <laughs> I trust you guys. It's been so long. So have both of these listen in our Etsy shop. We're carrying on the tradition, one of a kind. I mean, we do have two more tomato, two more, two more tomatoes that we can stick in something. I don't know what we're gonna do with those, but that is that. Thank you guys again. Enjoy that weather. If it's beautiful for you, hopefully tomorrow is a better day for us. So thank you again. Love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye everyone.